We now turn to explore what it means to be an engineer in a German context. Let's start by pointing to a curiosity about engineers in the present, a curiosity that we're going to explore through historical excavation. We're going to dig down into the past. Now, when you meet or you correspond with German engineers, you'll likely see after their names on their business cards or, let's say, on their letterhead, the abbreviation D-I-P-L-I-N-G or D-I-P-L-I-N-G with a parenthesis afterwards and the letters F-H in there, indicating that the engineer has a degree from a higher education institution. Now, the first question in this curiosity is raised by the abbreviation ING. It actually stands for the French term for engineer, ingenieur. Why would the Germans use the French word for engineers? I mean, come on. Don't they have their own concept? Also, what's the difference between including these letters FH or not? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? What exactly do these letters mean? What is signified by their absence? Also, why is it that the rules for using these abbreviations on somebody's business card are written into federal law, into national law? I mean, come on, isn't professional status the province of the profession? or professional societies or, or something like that. Why would the federal German government get involved in defining what counts as an engineer? Now, this little curiosity provides us a nice pathway into the cultural, exploring the cultural history and the emergence of German engineers. Our three guiding questions in these modules involve asking what it means to be an engineer, what counts as engineering knowledge, and what sorts of work do engineers do? In this case, we will find that there are two tracks, two identities for engineers in the German context. And we will learn that, that, these, that the status of these tracks themselves have evolved over time. We'll find out that the Germans have figured out a very interesting way of grappling with a, a long-standing problem in engineering, namely the relationship between practical knowledge and theoretical knowledge. And we will find that German engineers tend to work in the private sector, but while working in the private sector, German engineers can know and have known that they are contributing to the well-being of the nation state and indeed of humanity as a whole. Now, how does this work? To explore this cultural history, I want to call your attention to three different dominant cultural images. The first one is quality. The second, progress. The third, nationhood. I'll keep this in mind. When I ask students in class to give me some idea of what they see as the essence of German engineering, they all say, as, as probably you would say, BMWs or Mercedes-Benz. I mean, to them, BMWs and Mercedes-Benz vehicles somehow stand for quality, or a quality engineering product. But in a specific contemporary sense of precision, engineering precision, these vehicles for Germans are good icons of the dominant contemporary image of quality in the German context. But in order to understand this German sense of quality and its larger cultural significance, you need to understand how quality has figured in the dominant German, German image of progress. In the United States, in contrast, the dominant image of progress has focused on increasing standards of living, higher levels of income greater levels of comfort, let's say more stuff, which is built upon this distinctively American emphasis on low-cost, mass-use production. In the German case, the dominant image of progress has been built somewhat differently upon an ideal of emancipation, of freedom, a freeing of the human spirit, a release of something that is imminent or internal inside of humanity. It is naturally internal to the human being, the human essence, and it gets revealed over time. 
The main indicator of uh, developing progress in the German context has been increasing quality, a quality in human production. Now, engineering was, was, long, was long a low-status activity, but over time it became linked to the dominant images of progress and quality. And this happened when engineering practice came to be important for national identity. So today, by virtue of one's work in engineering, even when one is employed in private industry, one can be sure that by implementing engineering precision, doing precise engineering work, in developing quality technology and quality products, one is working to advance Germany as a nation state and humanity as a whole. But as we'll see shortly here, Germany has long, has long been and remains even today a highly diverse collection of states. So, in order to understand this, the cultural positioning of engineers, what it means to be an engineer, it's important to be able to describe how engineering came to help build this a unified nation state, a process that took place in the late 19th and the early 20th centuries. 